Good morning. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, we currently have a strong tropical storm that is going to quickly organize in the Western Caribbean Sea. We expect it to approach Florida as a major hurricane with maximum sustained winds of 70 miles per hour. Right now, the winds extend out 170 miles east of the center. So even though we are not in the cone and you guys keep hearing about the cone and how we're outside of it, we are not outside of the impact area. An extremely large wind field, which is in the 90th percentile of storms at this latitude, extending over 415 miles across. Most of the worst weather associated with these storms is on the east side. That's where we are. We are on the east side of this storm. We are under a storm surge warning, tropical storm warning, hurricane watch, and a flood watch currently here in Pinellas County. I need everyone to pay attention to the arrival of this storm. So we know that this storm is going to start to pick up speed and it's going to move fast. As of this morning's 8 a.m. advisory, the arrival of tropical storm force winds we can expect here in Pinellas around 9 a.m. and exiting at 9 p.m. And I know that's a short period of time for winds, but I want people to understand our grounds are very saturated. So any tropical storm force winds that occur for even a short period of time could very easily bring down trees, which means it will pull up underground infrastructure and pull down overhead infrastructure. Power outages are very likely to occur with this system. So I need people to be prepared for that. Our big concern is the storm surge. <clears throat> and we, were, we just talked to the National Hurricane Center this morning. They told us to continue to plan for five to eight feet of storm surge here in Pinellas County. And the trick with this storm surge is it's not going to be quick like the winds. We anticipate we are gonna have elevated waters 24 to 36 hours. So I wanna make sure that people are paying attention to that and we will post more information about the timing of when that will arrive uh, and when the height of that will be because it's not going to directly coincide with just the winds. So even once the winds have died down, we are still going to see higher levels along our coastal areas. At this time, we are issuing a mandatory evacuation for all residents in zone A, mobile home parks, countywide, effective immediately. This includes high-rise buildings in zone A, which will not be safe place to ride out the storm. As I mentioned, you may be hearing that we are outside of the cone, but we are not outside of the risk area. <clears throat> If you are in a zone, zone A and we've asked you to evacuate, we want you to stay outside of that zone for the duration of the storm. Please plan to stay with family or friends in a hotel or a motel, or if needed, in one of our six shelters, which are now open. We have opened Dunedin Highland Middle as a special needs shelter, Gibbs High School as a pet friendly and general population shelter. John Hopkins Middle as a special needs shelter. Largo High as a pet friendly and general population shelter. Leelman Innovation Academy as a general population shelter. And Palm Harbor University High as a special needs, pet friendly, and general population shelter. If you have special needs, and you are not already registered, you can still call the County Information Center for assistance at 727-464-4333. If you are on our special needs registry and have requested transportation assistance, you need to get on the bus when it arrives at your home. We are running those buses now. If you refuse transportation when we get there and later change your mind, you will have to make your own arrangements to get to the shelters. So if the transportation is coming for you and gets there, please get on that bus today. 
I want to make sure that people know that PSTA will be running free rides to all of our shelter locations. So that is available if people need transportation assistance. And if, if you have any issues, please call our county information center. Traffic is always a concern for people when it comes to hurricane. And we heard from people in the last hurricane that over 40% of Pinellas County residents decided to stay at home because they were worried about traffic. I wanna emphasize to people, this is not a huge storm. This, we are only evacuating zone A. So there's lots of areas in the county where people can go. You don't have to evacuate hundreds of miles. You can only go tens of miles. So again, look for family or friends, look for hotel, motel, or you can stay at one of our shelters. You can find the hotel accommodations uh, on our website at disaster.pinellas.gov. I want everybody to have their go kit ready today. So if you're gonna go to a shelter, make sure that you pack items, uh, some clothing, something to sleep on. If you have special dietary needs, make sure that you're taking that with you. If you have medications, make sure that you're taking that with you as well. Um, for the PSTA rides, uh, you can take your pet on those buses. So you'll have to have cats and small dogs in crates and a muzzle for your large dog. So I don't want anybody to stay at home because they don't feel they don't have a place to go or they don't have a way to get there, right? So we have those shelters open. You can find those locations at disaster.pinellas.gov and you can get a PSTA ride as well. If you're going to be staying at home because you're outside of the evacuation zone, you could, should consider what supplies you need. You'll have time to go out today to get those things. Um, stores are still open. Uh, you'll want to have backup battery packs for your phone. Make sure you're charging all your phones today. Um, great advice to like freeze bottles of water and containers of water in your freezer. So if the power goes out, you can keep your fridge colder longer. Extremely important that people with electric vehicles or um, golf carts or even those electric bikes that have lithium ion batteries you need to move those out of the surge area. We saw after Hurricane Ian a lot of vehicles that caught on fire. So I wanna make sure that if, if you're in the area where the storm surge is, move those vehicles outside of the storm surge zone. Make sure that you know your zone. You can get this information today at disaster.pinellas.gov and we've updated our site with the active evacuation zone and all of the shelter locations that are open. For all of our boaters out there, boat owners or people that may live aboard a boat, today is the day to secure your boat. Haul it out of the water and secure it in areas outside that, where it could float. No matter how valuable your boat is to you, it's not worth your life. Please do not ride out this storm on your boat. The marine conditions are going to be worse than they were for Debbie and for a much longer duration. Find a shelter or stay with a friend on land near you. You can find more boat preparation information at disaster.pinellas.gov. With that, I'll turn it over to our county administrator, Barry Burton. Good morning. I'm joined here with our, com our county commission chair, Kathleen Peters. And today, we really want to stress that today is a day to prepare. We know it's going to be nice weather outside, and people will get a sense of calm. But we've also seen weather conditions change very rapidly, and that's what is expected tomorrow. This 415-mile storm, would, if you looked at that, that would stretch from here to Georgia, a very, very large system. With that, we're going to feel the impacts. We're going to feel the impacts of storm surge. The storm surge is projected to be five to eight feet. Two years ago in Odelia, we saw the maximum of 4.1 feet. And, and that was only in a few spots. With that, brought 1,500 homes that had water damage. Think about that. The impacts can be real. And when water consumes you, then there's no way to help you. So today's the day to prepare. We have time, but that doesn't mean we can be complacent. If your home flooded in previous rain events, you will flood this time. 
and possibly at a much higher level. If you're electric dependent, it's very possible you're going to lose power. That's why we have the special needs shelter to be able to prepare and take care of you if you need that assistance. Remember, if you're in Zone A, uh, we're issuing a mandatory evacuation order because we know that that is most likely susceptible to the storm surge that will inundate your home and you. So we have time, prepare, but leave. Today we're sharing warnings, we're providing plenty of preparation tips, but we need you to do your part. Our staff's been hard at work. We've been clearing all the hot spots, trying to have prepare for the amount of storm surge that's going to come, drawing down water levels, clearing drains, and doing everything we can uh, to make sure our low-lying areas uh, minimize the impacts of this. But there's only so much that you can do with that much water coming at you. Our shelters are ready, our staff is ready, um, but we, we need to do that before the conditions worsen. Uh, to our media partners, and I was listening this morning, you know, several really talking about the impacts are not as going to be, are, are not as great. From a wind standpoint, that's probably true, but you still could have gusts that are significant, very strong tropical storm type gusts. The issue really is the storm surge and the impacts could be real. I don't want to downplay that um, because that'll cause people to stay where they're at and it, and if conditions worsen, we won't be able to help them. So please take it seriously. This is a significant storm, um, and we know and we've seen before how quickly conditions can change. So we have time. Please help us with uh, putting information out that people, if you're in zone A, you need to heed the warning, and you need to be out before tomorrow. At this time, we do have our commission chair. We also have our director of safety and emergency services, and we'd be happy to take any questions. Why not? Any questions from the room? Uh, Box 13? Yes. Um, what message do you have to those who are using previous storms as a gauge whether to take action or not on this one? Every storm is different. You cannot treat this one as you did the last one. The projections for this one for rain are very different than Debbie, right? So with Debbie, we did expect heavy rainfalls and we had a lot of inland areas that flooded. We're not expecting those hurricane force winds. We could get strong tropical storm force winds. This surge is the big story with this storm. This surge is predicted to be five to eight feet. And as the county administrator said, with Adalia, we had about four feet. So we're talking a significant difference. And I get it, right? Maybe some people have lived here their entire lives. They've never seen this. We heard this story after Debbie, right? People that have lived here and they've never seen flooding like that. There could be rain clouds and rain bombs that drop a lot of rain on an area in a very short period of time. The challenge we're going to have with this system is because the waters are going to be elevated for such a long period of time, that's going to block our normal storm drain system from being able to move any rainwater out. We're going to go through a series of high tides. So areas that have high tide flooding, you know, this is going to be exacerbated and this is going to be much higher than it was before. So especially for all of those folks that have been through the flooding events from Ada, Adalia, the, the, the week before Christmas storm, um, that is going to be much higher. Those coastal areas, we really need everybody to be paying attention to that risk. Yes, absolutely. So power outage are, are going to happen with this storm. Uh, and I do really want to stress is we have people out there in our community that are on life-sustaining medical equipment and other medical equipment that needs electricity. If that is your situation, you need to make sure that you are at a location 
that has a generator, that has backup power. So whether that's your home and you're outside of the evacuation zone, or you can come to one of our special needs shelters, we have generators there for that very purpose. Um, so I want to make sure that people are taking that into consideration. Anyone else in the room? I do just want to stress, as the county administrator said, we are looking at these impacts to really start Thursday morning. So you have time. People have time today. Put your preparations in place. If you're at work today, don't worry about it. You have tonight. And again, watch the timing. If this storm accelerates, you know, when you get home tonight, you have time to secure your home and then get to a safe location. So we don't want anybody to panic. Uh, we just want you to be aware. Please go to disaster.pinellas.gov. You can sign up for Alert Pinellas and get notifications right to your phone. Uh, and you can also download our Ready Pinellas app. We're here for you. Please feel free to call the County Information Center at 727-464, four, six, four. say it again. 727-464-4333. And I believe we have a question on Zoom. If you live in that evacuation zone, you need to evacuate. 